Hey guys, today I'm just making a quick video for you on designing and setting up your BPB pool. This video is going to be less focused on the actual settings behind the BPB pool and more focused on actually appearances and navigation. So first thing first, how do we actually find or create a BPB pool? We're going to click into the top here, we're going to go into integrations, and then we're going to click into the Sin 7 core BPB pool. From here, um, We'll have our overview of the sales that have come in from any of our current B2B portals, and we'll have any portals that exist, plus the option to create a new portal by pressing the plus button. I'm going to be using this portal called Blue Hub for today. Um, but the only additional step would be pressing the plus button and then adding a domain if you were creating a new portal. Streaming straight into it, we've got several tabs here. We're going to briefly be overviewing the general settings tab today mainly because this tab is mostly for the way the B2B is going to function and not the way it looks, but there are some appearance-based features within here as well. Next thing is going to be obviously the appearance, the navigation, the content pages, the email templates, um, and pretty much everything else there is to see in the pool. Before we get started though, um, the first issue that you're gonna face if you're trying to customize this for your company is that you're not going to have access to see any changes you're making. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go into invitations, click sales rep invitation and invite yourself to the pool. From here, you can then look at the pool as any customer you'd like. If I go back out of here and then I go into our portal now, you'll see an example of this here. I am Sean Ives at Blue Hub at Dokakota UK and I'm logged in as Bayside Club and I'm seeing what they will see. If I then go back into my portal, and start at the top here and just talk you through some of the basic settings. Um, within here, we have our, um, just scrolling through to see any that are appearance based. We have sh show in and out of stock um, available quantities. So this is gonna be useful for whether you want to show the amount of items you have in stock based on deer, or whether you just want it to show whether it's in or out of stock, or you can not show quantities at all and have them focus on that. Um, you can also show uh, family price ranges as either a minimum price or a minimum and maximum price for all of the products in that family if we are displaying any product families. We have a price list template we can select here where we can um, print out a price list for our customers which they will then see based on the template here. This can then be ma managed on the back end to how you want that to look. We also have our product layout, so the way we want our products to fit along the screen, whether we want 10 rows of 2, 6 rows of 3, etc. Here we have our price tier for our guest users, which isn't important to us, but what is, is our price tier for our regular retail price. Now what this will do is it will allow you to display a default price for every customer so they can compare based on their own pricing. So if they are on a different price tier within your dearer setup, then they will be able to see the regular price alongside the price that they're getting. Down at the bottom here, we have show out of stock items. So if we want to see items that are out of stock, we can take this. Whether we, if we want to hide those, we can hide them like so. We can also come in here and we can show things like the images in the portal or minimum order quantities as well. So there are a few different toggleable options there that will help you um, visualize the products a bit better and the stock a bit better. Finally, we have our family products view. Um, so this is how you want to view any product families, either as a list, a matrix, or you can do both. Jumping into our appearance now then, um, within here we have uh, basically the ability to select a logo for our portal, um, as you can see it will appear in the banner like so. You can't really move where any of these options affect, but you can change the resolution of the image to make it fit longer or, or taller along this banner. Um, so if you are having issues with the way it's displayed, try uh, changing the resolution of the image a bit and that might give you a better result. Other than this, um, on this page we have our different colors of our different parts of our page. My recommendation when you're trying to customize these is at first set it to a very standout color, such as here I can set this to black, and then I can save. Now when I refresh, I'm going to know what it is exactly that I'm affecting. So if I refresh, we can now see that we're affecting this area here. Based on that, I can now make my decision of what color I want that to be. So I can now just set that to white if I want to. So all of these colors are based on hex codes. So if you do have a marketing pack that has different hex codes or color codes available within it, 
You can then just enter these here instead to get more specific colors. All of the following options are all based around this principle. You can change the color to see what you're affecting or just base it on the text here if you can. Um, you can change the colors around or you can use hex code to do it uh, more specifically. When we get to the bottom here, um, we start to have our, our menu set up. So this is for our navigation below. Here we have um, a way of affecting the top level, mid level and bottom level of our menus. Um, this is useful if you are having in-depth menu navigation on your uh, header or your, or your navigation bar on the vertical axis. Um, so the first one you click into is gonna have the following colors. The second tab you then click into will have these colors, so on and so forth. Finally, at the bottom here, we can add a slogan to our uh, layout. So if I just have an um, example slogan here, just so you can see what that looks like, and save. We'll see that this then populates along the top here. We can also then increase the font size or um, anything else we'd like to, uh, any other ways we'd like to format this, we can do, including using code and HTML if we'd like. So here we have uh, a couple of different default formats, or you can copy and paste formats from something like Word into here. Once we're happy of our, our general um, layout here, we can start doing things like our navigation bars, although it's probably easier to do the navigation bars first, since if you're changing the colors of them, you're gonna want something to look at for reference. When I speak about our navigation bars, um, we're talking about our navigation bar along this top here, or we can have a vertical navigation bar, which would be along the side. Currently, R1 isn't displayed, but it would just, oh wait, it's right, in fact, it's right here, sorry. Um, and you can have those two navigation bars if you like. So as you can see here, this one has a name of brands with the options of Epson, Fusion, and Sportsgate, which looks like so. And this one has four different items in it, um, whiskey, computers, backpacks, and food, which you can see here. Base, currently, this is based on categories, so if we click into these, we're going to see the products of the relative categories. We can do this for tags or brands if we want to, or we can go an extra level further and we can use the custom menu option to customize this completely. If we do so, we can start adding in whatever we want in terms of titles, so I could add category here. We can then change this to either this be what we click on for our products, or we can go that next level deeper, and we can add, make it a menu item, add a sub menu in here of brand. From there, we can go even deeper and we can make this a menu item. And within brand, we can have different options. So within here, we can do different lists of products based on our category and our brand. So for example, I could add products and it could be for a given category and a given brand. So if I put in these tags in, any products that fall under both of these categories will now be within our products. We'll then give that a name, um, such as uh, example category, an example brand. And I'll just add a couple extra products here so that we have something to see if we click into either of these. Finally, I'm just going to, in fact, let me make sure there is a product in here as well. better. Um, now that that's done, we can always add in another top level item, such as, that's it, sorry, that's the wrong one, and then a top level item. Um, so we can add a second tab here, for example. We can change the fonts down here. And if we click back in and refresh now, we'll see that our navigation bar will have updated. And here we have our category, our brands, and then our example category, and our example brand. Or we have our second tab, which isn't linked to anything for right now. If we click into our example category, we don't have any products listed here right now. Um, that's just because this is a test account. Hopefully we have this product in our example brand appears. It hasn't because we don't have any stock available of it right now and that's turned on. But your products would now appear within here. That's gonna be in terms of the navigation bars. Um, you can get quite complex with those. Um, but for now, that, that's a basic overview and you can go and toy with that as you please. Any questions you have on that, please feel free to get in touch um, and we can obviously answer those and add it to the video to help users in the future.
If we keep scrolling down here, we, at the bottom, we have um, a few different options for different web elements. Um, we can turn any of these on and off using the tick boxes. Starting out here, we have our carousel. So if I click in, this is our carousel. Currently, I've got two images in there, and they will just cycle at the top of the page. Within here, we can select our image here. We can use different um, categories to list these on here. And then we can use different items that uh, you go to when you click into it. So for example, if I click into this, it will take me to a product. Um, actually, um, this is using our either brands, categories, or product specifics. And here you specify one of the following. Next, we have um, group banners. So these are just uh, banners of products you can put across the page or pro uh, banners of categories. So if I take you into back into the portal, here I've just got three of these set up. They're all gonna be linked to a different category in this case, and we can click into them and we can see our different categories. <laughs> it would help if I had stock of a lot of these items. Um, so here we go, here we can see some examples, or actually there was anything listed in those cases since we are showing out stock items. Um, and here we can see our product appearing and what that actually looks like. If we click into here, one of our settings on our main menu, this is a product family by the way, so that's why this table is appearing, where we can pick specifically which variant of the product family we want using the matrix or the list. If we scroll down to the bottom here, um, sorry, not there, it should be in our description on the left, but since it's a family, it won't have one. Um, so if I go back to our menu, click in our whiskey here, we'll see our additional attributes listed at the bottom left. Um, this is another option you can turn on or off. Depending on how you're using additional attributes from the system, you may want to display these, you may not. You may even just change certain items that are on the BT pool so that the additional attributes are more usable and user-friendly. Go back to our setup now. So we've covered our carousels and our group of banners. And the last one we can look at is tabbed panes, where we can basically just put a pane in the screen and we can tag, uh, use a certain tag to display different types of items. Um, here, I've just done um, whiskey. And you can see that there's a pane that you can click into with two different types of whiskey within here. Um, going back up, we now have content pages. Um, these are all listed at the bottom of the screen here, but we have contacts, terms and conditions, about us, frequently asked questions, etc. These are just some default ones that Deer provides, however you can remove or add these to your leisure. Um, we can also click into any of them and we can add content. Um, once again, this accepts any kind of HTML formatting or URLs being input, so you can actually do with this pretty much whatever you want. The only thing you can't do is move it outside of the box designated by Deer or Sin7 Core. Um, you can even add images here, so or video so, um, video links, I believe. So there is quite a bit you can actually do with that. However, it's not going to allow you to do any server side content here. So if you do have something like um, a contact us page, it may be best if you are trying to accept um, emails or something through it to link back to an actual content pa uh, contacts page instead. Other than that, you can go as wild as you want with these and add whichever ones you'd like in here and just use them for uh, um, bits of information your customers might need. Going down even further, we have our email templates. Um, so within here, there are different uh, things that will obviously leave the system and go to the customer, such as the reset password links, invoices for orders, and the invitation to the BT. These work in a similar way to templates, where you can use different merge fields within the content in order to make it more dynamic and go to the user um, in a better format. Other than that, once again, you can customize this as you please to match your brand. Finally, at the bottom here, we have our price lists where we can set up a price list um, that the user can print out of the system where they can get a specified price for a certain group of products within the system. Um, in this case, I've just done um, a price list example, which has just the prices for whiskey within it that they can get printed off for them using the price list template that you set up on the back end. That's going to be it in terms of um, all the different settings we can use and kind of configure with. There is quite a bit to go through there. Um, but once again, if you have any questions, please don't be afraid to get in touch and ask us um, them so we can get you more detailed responses. That'll be all from me. Um, I will speak to you in, we'll see you in the future videos. Um,
Love you. Bye.